Hi, welcome. I'm Damien, application engineer for Solid Tech in New Zealand. Um, I'm going to show you today a, a cheeky way of getting some buoyancy loads from a model. There's no direct way of calculating in SolidWorks, but we can use simulation and design studies to iterate. So this is my model made out of uh, low density polyethylene. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to apply pressure to the bottom. We're going to hold it at the top and see the reaction forces on the top, and then iterate the height of our water line based on this plane to get a zero reaction at the top. So all we need to do is um, split our faces so we can apply that pressure load just on these bottom faces. Okay. We're going to take advantage of symmetry, so we're going to cut this on the front and the right planes to make our model run quicker. Uh, what we also need to do to define a hydrostatic load, we need to put a coordinate system in so we know where the water level is, and we can see I put it at this vertex. That white's always going to be coincident with that plane, and Y it will be zero at the top. We're going to make a new simulation study, and we're going to set it up. We have our material fixtures. We're going to put in a number of different fixtures. We're going to use symmetry on the faces that we split to save some time. I'm also going to use a roller sliding, which incidentally behaves in the same fashion as symmetry. Okay, and we're going to apply our loads. We need a gravitational load going down. We could also align that with the plane if it wasn't parallel with the top plane. And we need our pressure load. So we know that we want to apply it to these two phases, and we also know that it equals rho g h, where h is the depth into the water. So 9.81 times 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed equals 9810 newtons per meter squared. What we need to do is click the non-uniform button, button. That allows me to base it on the coordinate system that we've made. And we can multiply that by any of the coordinates of the nodes on here. So we want to know the depth y. So we're going to multiply 9810 by y. Let me put 1 in the y. And you'll see when you do it you get an illustration showing that I've defined that correctly. Showing that it peters out to 0 at the top. Um, I'm going to create a, a coarse mesh just to make the model run a little bit quicker and then we'll run it. And that's that's my model set up. And you'll see I can right click on my results and say list the result force, either reaction or free body. And you'll see we get the reaction on that face for that load. So what we need to do now is actually say, well what I want to do is set up a design study. Right click down here. New design study. We're going to say I want to vary a parameter. So this can be a model dimension, material, mesh, loads, pressures. It could change the density of water based on some values if you wanted. What we really want to do is add this dimension 10 and I'm going to call this water line. Oops, I've already done that one. And we see we've added it in there. Okay, so I'm going to vary the water line between 10 and 45 millimeters and they'll get close to the bottom but what I really want to do I want to optimize this and add a sensor which is going to be as you can see up here a sensor and we're going to say I'm looking for simulation data and what I'm trying to find out you can find out when the stress was zero or strain displacement what we can do is free body forces and we can say just in the y direction okay Newtons, maximum over selected entities, I could or I could do average over the selected entities. It's probably going to be the same in this particular case. Okay. And we end up with our goals. And what I really want to do, I want it to be exactly zero. That's what my goal is. When it's zero, I know my pressure equals my gravitational pull. 
then I run it and you'll notice up here you can see it changed the height from top to bottom and guess in between running more and more design scenarios and you'll see it lists them here it says the optimal so you can see each one that it ran listing that value 0 0.2.0392 which was the optimal 34.65 so what you could do then if you wanted a more accurate solution come back in okay it was around the 34 so I'm going to go from 32 to 36 and run again Thirty-three point seven seven, and one more time. I'm going to do it from thirty-three to thirty-four. And we really can see that reaction force is very small now, point not not one two newtons. And clearly, we could keep going until we were satisfied with the accuracy that we're after. So that's how it works on a very simple model. Um, you'll also see uh, here's one I did earlier that was slightly more complicated. This one here was a boat, a more complex boat hull. And what I set up in here instead was I had an extra body in the middle and I did a, a sketch to define my plane. And you'll see that this, this sketch here has a front height and a rear height. And I vary those two dimensions to get me not only my depth, but also my angle. And I set this model up a little bit more complex. So I did a rigid connector between my block in the middle and all of these. That way I can put my restraints for resisting moment up and right on this vertex and up on here and I can extract those out from my model and, and set it up so it's just a little bit more a setup but just as achievable and you'll see that uh, the model that I ran here had a results um, reactions of 130 newtons so coming in around this sort of value that's where it was left which would probably be the approximate waterline of this model thanks for listening